Although it's hard to imagine Coulston returning to his plinth, work continued into the afternoon to repair the damage done in Parliament Square, where, as it happens, the job of cleaning Churchill's statue had been given to a man called Winston. The statue of Edward Coulston had been under review in Bristol for years. The council had been talking about removing the plaque, saying he was a virtuous and wise son of the city. Yep, that's what it says, for two years. So perhaps the protest just hastened the inevitable. But the hostility towards him and the toppling of the monument have raised questions about the purpose of all statues. Should we be more careful about who we put on pedestals and allow to remain on them? If statues were merely meaningless symbols, Perhaps they wouldn't attract so much attention when they're put up or if they're pulled down. To those who protested yesterday, the position here of a monument to a slave trader meant something. Its new position means something too. It was a symbol of the contempt that powerful people in Bristol have for the black community. And I feel a sense of catharsis that it's not there. I feel it should stay empty with his plaque on there, because every time I look at that, I remember all our lost souls that we will never know. The crowd yesterday was mixed, but one of the questions raised by the protest is about the way many black people believe they're perceived in a mainly white society. Who gets a place on the pedestal? Whose voice gets heard when that decision is made? It was about more than just a statue. You may not like what happened, and it may this be distasteful, for you, but you have to understand it. You cannot, we cannot afford politicians that refuse to understand the populations that, that uh, they've been tasked with leading. The protests in Bristol have reignited another campaign. In Oxford, they're preparing for a protest tomorrow, calling for the removal of a different statue. Cecil Rhodes was a 19th century politician in Southern Africa. Campaigners say he's the embodiment of white supremacy. Behind the mesh is his likeness, displayed at a college. The university has said it provides a reminder of the complex legacy of colonialism. We have this, this reputation as a global leading university, but we don't look at where a lot of the wealth that built this place comes from. And so, of course, what happened yesterday has had a role in reinvigorating that conversation, which we're now plugging ourselves into again. For roads to fall, um, if, 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 if the statue falls, but the mindset and the reality on the ground stays the same, Rhodes hasn't fallen. It needs both. And then in London's Docklands, further calls for the removal of a third statue, that of another slave owner, Robert Milligan. It's not just about the statues that we have to men like Robert Milligan. It's also about the statues that we don't have to the enslaved, and they were the people whose labour built the West India docks. The toppling of statues has emblematic value. Perhaps some of yesterday's demonstrators had moments like this one in mind. Goodbye, sit down. But Bristol is not Baghdad. This is a different cause in a different context. Today, the question for many people who want to see the statues of slave traders taken down remains, how? Many supporters of yesterday's outcome wish it had been achieved through some other means. Rohit Katru, News at 10.